Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. The gospel is back. As always. As always. It only takes to listen to the gospel message, hear it, understand it, and the gospel message will change your life. Because nobody has ever been in contact with the love of God and remain the same. Anyone who's ever met Jesus, anyone who's ever met the Lord, he never walked away the same. It doesn't matter what your need is. Anybody who comes into contact with the Son of God can never go away the same. Some people met Jesus, they had leprosy, but after having had a conversation with Jesus, they left with a brand new skin. Skin so smooth and fresh like a baby. But an hour ago when the man met Jesus, he was covered in leprosy. Some met Jesus after having been carried to him by their friends because they were paralyzed. But by the time they've been in contact with the Son of God, they left the scene a changed man. That is the power of the gospel. That's the power of the love of God. The love of God will never leave you the same. The love of God will leave you a transformed person. The love of God will do a work in your life. You will be forever grateful. But before I start speaking for just a few moments, I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus into the foundations of the town of Oldham. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ on behalf of every man, woman and child in this here town of Oldham. I apply the blood of Jesus Christ. On every family, every household, every address, in the town of Odin. I plead the blood of the Son of God, the blood of the Passover lamb, the blood that turns away the angel of death. When the angel of death sees the Passover blood, when the angel of death sees the blood of Jesus, he has to acknowledge, he has to pass over. That blood of Jesus, the Passover Lamb of God, is the blood that I plead on behalf of every soul in order. That's the blood that I speak into the souls of the men, women, and children of the town of Oldham. I speak the blood of Jesus into the spirits of the people of Oldham that the spiritually dead might hear the voice of the living God and live again. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. 
the transforming power, the transforming blood of Jesus. I apply the blood of Jesus for transformation. I plead the blood of Jesus for newness of life. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ for healing. That those who are after healing may be healed by the blood of the Lamb of God. The blood of Jesus is as powerful today as it was 2,000 years ago because Jesus Christ is alive. God bless you, sir. Because Jesus Christ loves you. Because Jesus went to the cross, died on that cross, shed his blood for you. And for that reason, I plead the blood of Jesus for whoever needs to contact and whoever needs to connect with God. You see, without the blood of Jesus, no one has entrance into the, into, the, into the presence of God. The only way you can enter into God's presence is through the blood of Jesus. I'm talking about the true and the living God. I'm talking about the creator of the heavens, the sea, the earth, the dry land. I'm talking about the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm talking about I'm talking about the God who raised Jesus from the dead. That one is the true and the living God. So I apply the blood of Jesus for those that are weary. I call on the blood of Jesus Christ for those that need deliverance. I call on the blood of Jesus Christ for those that are tired those that are exhausted, those that are worn out, those that need rest, I call on the blood of Jesus Christ on your behalf. I call on the blood of Jesus Christ that God will replenish your strength. I call on the blood of Jesus Christ for the renewing of your mind. I call on the blood of Jesus Christ for the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ to enter into your heart. I call on the blood of Jesus for forgiveness of sins. I call on the blood of Jesus Christ for cleansing. I call on the blood of Jesus Christ upon every emotional scar that is in your life. I apply the blood of the Lamb of God. Every heartache, every heartbreak, every disappointment. I call on the blood of Jesus. Because Jesus will never leave you alone. Because Jesus will never abandon you. Because you can call on his name any time of the day, any day of the week, any week of the month, any month of the year. You can trust on the name of the Lord Jesus. The name of Jesus Christ is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall never be ashamed. Whoever shall, whoever, whosoever shall call on the name of Jesus Christ will never be disappointed. Man will disappoint you. But God is always there for you. God's got nothing but love for you. God loves you so much. He sent you Jesus. Jesus came. Died on that cross. And it should have been you and me. Hung on that cross. Because we were born guilty. Before you even learned language, we were already born guilty. Before we even knew how to lie, we were already born guilty. We were born guilty because of the sin of Adam and Eve. Every person born of a man and woman was born guilty because of the rebellion of Adam and Eve there in the Garden of Eden. Because God said, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat it because the day you eat it, you will surely die. That's what God said to Adam. 
He said everything else you can have, but the knowledge of good and evil, you don't need that. Because you're supposed to reflect my image. You're supposed to be after my likeness. You take your thoughts from me. You take your emotions from me. You take your knowledge from me. You are a reflection of me. So you don't need the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But when Adam sinned against God, the curse of sin was extended to the entire human race because the entire human race was still in Adam at that time. That's why I say it every single one of us we were born guilty there is no amount of religion that will make you right with God there is no amount of being nice to your neighbor that will make you right with God there is no works at all there is nothing that a spiritually dead person can do that can make them right with God the only per- thing that can make a person right with God is the blood of Jesus. When you go to the cross of Jesus and you acknowledge that you were born a sinner, when you go to the cross of Jesus and confess your sin and live the dead meaningless life that we inherited from Adam and take on the new life that Jesus Christ has given us and the life that Jesus Christ is giving you today is the resurrection life. The very same life by which Jesus was risen from the dead is the life that God is offering you today. The very same Holy Spirit by whom Jesus was risen from the dead. Did I not give you one of my listeners? On the I did, yeah. That was I thought that was you. is offering you today is resurrection life it's not just any kind of life totally different from the life we inherited from Adam the life that the son of God is offering you today is resurrected life is the Holy Spirit Because you see, the life of a thing is in the blood. Your life is in your blood. So the life of God is in the blood of Jesus. When Jesus shed his blood on that cross for you, God was offering you his life. And the life of God is eternal. Because God is eternal. The life of God is immortal. Because God is immortal. The life that God is offering you today is the very same life by which he was Jesus from the dead. The same spirit that God is offering you today is the same spirit by whom Jesus was risen from the dead. That's the reason why Jesus came. Christ came on that cross and the death of Jesus Christ on the cross 
paid the price for my sin. The death of Jesus on the cross paid the price for your sin. The death of Jesus Christ on the cross opened dialogue between you and God. The blood of Jesus shed on the cross is the only way humanity can reconcile back to God. Nobody enters the presence of God without the blood of Jesus. God doesn't hear anybody at all except they come by the voice of the blood of Jesus. The only basis on which God can have a relationship with you is on the basis of the blood of Jesus. The Gospel of John chapter 11 verse 25 I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? That's what Jesus said. Jesus the one who rose from the yeah, that one, the one who rose from the dead, says he is the resurrection and the life. Jesus says that whosoever believes in him will have eternal life. That's what Jesus said. The life that we're living out today. As much as we want to say, oh yes, I'm living my life. Not really, you know. Let me break it to you. You're not living your life. The life you're living today is the life of Adam. That's the life you're living today. The life you're living today, you inherited that life from Adam. Adam is the father of the human race. And we know what traits are in the life of Adam. The reason why humanity, or the reason why people are always avoiding to talk about God, they inherited that from Adam. Because after Adam had eaten on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, after his conscience had begun to accuse him, Adam ran away from God. He went and hid among the trees. So when you hide away from the gospel, when you avoid the gospel message, all you're doing is living out the life of Adam. When God confronted Adam, Adam refused to say sorry. Instead, he was blaming the wife. That's exactly what people do today. When you present the gospel before people and they come up with any, every kind of excuse under the sun, they're only doing what their father Adam does. Because Adam did not repent. He chose to find excuse and blame somewhere else. And that's what people do today. Whatever reason you have for not becoming a Christian, whatever reason you have of not getting right with God and reconciling with God, whatever that reason is, you inherited that reason from Adam. The guilt of, co the guilt of sin that pesters your conscience, you inherited that from Adam. Never mind you're living your life. You're not living your life. You're just living out the life that you inherited from Adam. That's why the gospel message is coming to you. That's why salvation has been offered to you, to you today freely. The message is God's got nothing but love for you. God, oh, God bless you, sir. God bless you. God loves you so much. God loves you so much. He wants you to stop living the dead, meaningless life that we inherited from Adam. He wants you to grow up into the life that Jesus is offering. And on that note, I say God bless you. God bless you all.
May the blood of Jesus Christ continue to bring peace to your homes. May the blood of Jesus Christ continue to bless your families. May the blood of Jesus Christ continue to repel the angel of death. I plead the blood of the Passover Lamb of God, the blood of Jesus. The Bible says that. The Lord says, when I see the blood, I will pass over. When the angel of death sees the blood of Jesus Christ, the door of your house, he has to pass over. That's why I plead and apply the blood of Jesus Christ on behalf of every soul in order. In Jesus' name. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.